Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Big Eagle. I am from the Ihankawan Dakota Sioux Nation, as well as Lower Brule and the Rosebud Sioux. So I'm here today with LaDonna Allard of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and we are going to talk about our traditional tattoo culture. And so I'll go ahead and turn it over to LaDonna. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I'll get to wash day. Um, my name is Tamakawa Shtewi, her good earth woman, um, and rogue member of Sandy Rock Sioux Tribe. I'm a Hunkwa Pabiska Sisitan Dakota. I am Hunkwapa Sihasapa and Oguala Lakota. Um, I'm Lakota on my mother's side, Dakota on my father's side. I, um, grew up in probably a different type of family. I cannot tell you what other people do. I can only say what we do. So I grew up with my grandma Ellis and my grandma Ellis's father, a Jerome Red Cloud was in the 101 circus, Clyde Betty circus. He was in a lot of different circuses, um, but my grandfather was covered with tattoos. So I always just thought it was normal. So I grew up with my grandma, Ellis. She was born in 1908 with her arms tattooed. So this is in the 1910s and 20s when my grandma was tattooed. My grandma was tattooed specifically because the government was taking her away so my grandfather tattooed her name, her birth date on her arm so she wouldn't forget who she was. And then he did the dot. He put the dot on her before they took his baby girl away from her. She never did um, have access to her family after that, but she always talked about this, this whole thing. So. All of our grandfather, great grandfather's pictures, he is covered in tattoos. My grandmother has tattoos. And so when I go around to people and they say, well, any people didn't have tattoos. And I used to think, well, why is my family so different, so strange? Mm -hmm. So then I was talking to older people. And so the women would have these, these marks on their face, marks, dots, lines, each one determines a different part of our life. So if you know that this girl has these dots, you know that she possibly was a pipe carrier or she was a, a, um, in ceremony. So each of these dictates part of, part of our ceremony. But you got to understand our, our history. I don't know if history is the right word, but you got to understand how we lived. So a long time ago, when they actually did uh, tattoos, they didn't have ink. And so with the really old, old tattoos, you went down out here in Plains, I'm not talking about in Plains House. They used um, ash. From fires and they would mix this ash up. One of the problems with the ash is after you age or so the tattoos disappear. You said that they used ash for the ink. Yeah. Um, what did they use to put the tattoo in? Porcupine quill. Oh, ow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, the, wow, that must have hurt. Yeah, <laughs> porcupine quills are, um, they would make like an owl, you know, like we have our owl. That we make the holes in a rawhide. So they just make skinnier ones. Indians are very adaptable. They make all kinds of stuff. Ink came in to our part of the country probably about 1910, 1920, 
So we didn't have a lot of ink. Yeah. And so that's why there were other substances. But what happened with the other substances, they dissolve after age, after time. So. Yeah, that's what yeah. I've heard with a lot of the traditional um, ink like that, is that you would have to go back and get it redone continuously over your lifetime for it to stay. And then also with the wet plates um, photography process, that's what, when they used to capture, that was 1900s, 1920s, I think, up to the 1930s, that didn't capture the tattoos oh. at all. You, you can't see them in the plates. And so if you want to go back to say, why aren't there any tattoos? We, you know, I've had long discussion with Freedoms about the old photographs and how the photographs do not show the tattoos on people. Mm -hmm. But also in the uh, photograph, they were set up so that people would not see tattoos. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Oh, I would say beginning 1908, late 1800, there was such an outcry of disgust seeing women with tattoos. Because now there are settlers coming in and they are getting these women who've been taken by tribes and they bring these women back and they have tattoos on their face. And so how does the European culture deal with that. So the image or idealism of tattoo was savagery, was the idea of this woman's a loose woman, this idea that they are worshiping pagan gods. Or it, there's a lot of weird ideas in there, but all of these, the women who first, um, the face tattoos, they were looked upon. And so the next generation did not allow no face tattoos mm -hmm. because the judgment from the outside world was too overwhelming. Um, and this is, we're talking about late 1800s when the animosity against people with tattoos. So as I said, my grandfather had tattoos, my grandma has tattoos, my mom, all my children, myself, is because it's always been in our family. And I can't speak for any other family, but we have always had. So my, my, uh, my grandma got her tattoo in 1908 and her father got his tattoos in 1870. So it's not like Oh, it's 1915. We got a tattoo. You know, there's a there's a, a history behind it. Um, unspoken history. Mm -hmm. Nobody really talks about. It. Nobody really talks about the symbolism. So, we as tribal people, we use red paint to dictate where we're at in ceremony, what we're doing. Um, as you see with our murdered or missing women, they have taken the red handprint to dictate we need help. Um, so each of the symbols that we put on our bodies sends a message. And these messages are supposed to help and supposed to heal. So I really was confused when people were making derogative remarks about tattoos or, you know, and stuff because it wasn't how I was taught. And maybe I'm just strange. I've been strange all my life. And, but all of my family, my great grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, my daughters, my cousin sitting over there, my son, they all have tattoos. Whether or not we had tattoos in 1700, I cannot tell you. But I do know the other tribes did. Mm. The other tribes did. If they were introduced, the next tribe would. So um, there is no point where we were isolated. Oh, only Hopi's over here, and only Navajo's over here, only Lakota's. It was never like that. There was always the constant 
influx of people visiting and trading and, and um, sharing. Mm -hmm. And so now today, as we've been put on separate reservations and everything, we don't share as much as we used to. And so half of the knowledge is not there anymore, like tattoos. Mm. Or you can go in a community, at least I can, I can go in a community and I can look around and see how much of an influx Christianity has taken in that community. And you'll see a lot of adverse tattoos are not allowed, da, 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 you know, all this stuff. And, and it is usually because of the, the Christian belief that came into their community. But I do believe that Christianity was devastating to our people. So that we have to relearn our own history again. Mm -hmm. We have to relearn our own culture, our own designs. Mm -hmm. Because they tried to erase that. And for me, like Stephanie, can you see me? I am alive. Mm -hmm. Can you see me? I am not invisible anymore. Mm -hmm. Can you see me? That's what it represents to me. And I know you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because for so long, people have just made us invisible. For so long, we've been asking for help. We've been asking for a lot of things and we are ignored. We are invisible. So for me, I like my tattoos. My grandma told me, baby, go put something on your body, a butterfly or something. So when they kill you, I can find you in the ditch. That's how my grandma talked to me. <laughs> okay. Tattooed butterflies because grandma said. But when you come to uh, Indian community, no offense, but there are certain people in that community to who make the judgment that they know everything about that history. Mm -hmm. And funny, that's not. We wish it were true. There are certain people in the tribes who are amazing historians and still carry the history. But just like the other day, I was talking, I said, yeah, December 15th coming up. Well, I assume everybody knows what December 15th is. And I was shocked. Oh, they don't know. That's City Bull's death. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, I think Sandy Rock's the only place that has that as a tribal holiday. Mm -hmm. Nobody works on that day. It's a commemoration to City Bull. And so I assume the world stops at December 15th. It doesn't. <laughs> but on December 15th, all of our people leave on the Bigfoot ride to right to Wounded Knee. So to me, that's the big thing of my, of my world. And it's not the big thing in anybody else's world. Mm -hmm. So I thought, we need to educate. But how do we do that? Because education can be done in a way that causes controversy. Education can be done in a way that spreads knowledge. Our education can be done in a way to protect that knowledge. We have to decide where we are in that system. Me, I'm 65 years old. I have brain cancer. I am going to say everything I want to say, no matter if people don't want to hear it. Um. I know my history, my culture, my way of life. And I am so tired of people trying to tell people how we live our culture mm -hmm. when everybody lives their culture. Because of how we had to grow up, Nobody is above anybody else. Mm -hmm. We all grew up in foster homes and group homes and boarding schools and relative care. And out here we call it farming where the farmers got kids to work their farms. We have all of these things that I think could really make a person angry. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about this the last few days. That's why 
see lines that I want on my face are so important to me because they tell a message. Isn't that what this is all about? Telling a message. And if we don't tell that message, we become invisible. So for me, I can't be anything else than what I am. And I won't be anything else. But I am so proud of my tattoos. <laughs> that I show everybody. And every inch has a meaning. Which brings me closer to my husband. I miss dearly. It makes me understand that I stand with Mauna Kea 100%. It says that water is life. It says that the blade of sweet grass that brings positive energy, the buffalo print, it's the deer print, it's all of these things that mean so much to me. So why not tell other people this is who you are? Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I look at things different. Um, but I can't change my family. I can't make, oh, we never had no tattoos in my family because my family is all tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> and what am, I, what am I supposed to say about that? Oh, this is not traditional. Oh, but my grandpa was, what was he then? Mm -hmm. My grandma, what was she? Mm -hmm. My grandma was a full butt. What was she? Did she violate culture and tradition by having tattoos on her face? I ask. Because my grandma was a good woman. And for somebody to tell her that she is not traditional, that she is not native, would be a crime against nature because she'd sunk her put you. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we are quick to make judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's I, what I see happening all over because we, we are at fault. I am at fault for not teaching more. So there are people in all of their communities that can learn. And if nobody teaches, part of our history is gone. Mm -hmm. So there is one group, one band who made a decision, no tattoos for whatever their spiritual reason is. That's that band, that's that family, that's that Teo Shui. And this Teo Shui, same time, same period, has tattoos, some related to their spiritual connection, some related to their position and spirituality, but they're tattoos. So, how is that wrong? Mm -hmm. And how can anybody say my grandma didn't exist or her dad didn't exist? And I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and get tattoos. I'm just saying this is just a part of our life. And rediscovering our lives is where we're at right now as Native people, not any of us were brought up with this. Oh, I'm so traditional. We were all brought up in different schools, influx of Christianity and missionaries, and we were all brought up bicultural. And so we understand a little bit of that world, but we have to hold on to what is tight. And if we know something in our heart, we can't let anybody change that. You hear me? Tattoos to me are my identity. Mimila, the butterfly. My grandma said I was always like that. She said I never sat still for very long and I was always going, 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 going. So she called me that. So that's why. I had put butterflies on myself so that my grandma would know me. Mm. And I think 
as other people? Do they understand the whole idea of having some image so in the afterworld they know you? And so that, to me, I need my grandma to know me. So oh, is that, that is a teaching that she shared that when you mark yourself and you go over into the other world, is that's how she would recognize you, not from your physical form, but from the markings that you put on your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love my grandma. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> oh. um, I was what? wondering if you could show just a little bit cl more closer up some of your markings on your, your wrists and... and oh. This here is the watermark that represents on our picture that represents water. And this is my first hand poke from a Haida woman in Alaska. And then she said to me, if you get any more, make sure they're hand poked. And then when you came, I, I told you, I could not believe how great you did this braid of sweetgrass, but I wanted a braid of sweetgrass. And so she did an amazing job with the braid of sweetgrass. Mm -hmm. And then the Mauna Kea marks, I had this done in Hawaii. And Stephanie did the buffalo print because Mauna Kea is the mountain that connects all of us. Mm -hmm. Our homeland still has to determine who we are and the buffalo is where I am from. And then as Stephanie said, the arrows, represent resistance and the horse tracks these represent my husband my husband's name is man standing holding his horse he would stand and make sure the horses are ready in battle so all of these things have special meaning to me but when I leave this world my relatives can find me. Is that? I, I don't know how to say anything other than what yeah. I was taught. Yeah. So I've I've um, heard that as well that we have to have those markings so they recognize us in the spirit world, so that we can even pass over into the happy hunting grounds. We have to have our markings as yeah, if we don't recognize our them. Name. Yes. I, if you want to, you can share a little bit more about your plan for the women's gathering. So I had this idea. I have 20 million ideas constantly. I had this idea as if I could get women from all over just to sit down and talk. What is it to have a healthy community? How do we get to that point? Point. what has to be done and in some of my research I have like what is it to be a, a traditional woman what is it to be a bicultural woman what is it to be a woman of today and what do we face um, and so I thought if we all sat down and talked to each other each of us have a little bit of a story if we all came together, we could have a whole story that could make a better world for the future generation. So that's kind of what I was thinking. And I was thinking it would be like late um, summer, early fall, only if we understand where the virus is. Then we'll get a direct time. We've already possibly got funding for the conference, but I want to bring women from all over just to sit down. Two days of talking, one day of just eating. Hey, no. Hey. <laughs> well, that sounds lovely. I look forward to being there as long as everything allows um, with the coronavirus and the changing of our world. So I really wanna thank you for sharing
more about yourself than your family and your family's culture and tradition and history. So I love you very much. And I, I really pray for your health and recovery every single day. And I'm, I'm blessed to have you in my life. So. Uh, well, you know, they told me I was going to die. They told freedom I was going to die. They told freedom that nobody lives from a geoglassoma tumor. They told them I wouldn't live six months. The longest anybody has lived is 14 months. And so the doctors treat me like I'm anomaly. Anomaly. Uh huh. Because they they remove the tumor. It grew back twice, but it's dormant right now. But they can't believe I'm as healthy as I am. Going through radiation and treatment for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And. I do have repercussions, you know, I've lost my short term memory and I've lost the ability to tell time, but everything else, my long term memory, history, culture, everything's still intact. I so feel it. almost as if you've been targeted because of how much, you, because you're a historian, you know, particularly in the Dakota way of life. And I feel like you've been targeted that they wanted to remove that history from you. So you couldn't teach the people, so you couldn't carry on and, and help the people remember who they are. So this has already been said. Mm -hmm. They have brought ceremony and brought protectors. Somebody had hurt me and somebody is continuing to try to hurt me. That's what the spirit told us. Mm -hmm. But all I have to do is continue to pray and do my best. Yeah. And we'll continue to pray for you as well. So we love you and thank you so much for taking the time out, especially during your recovery period to talk with us. All right, and hope to see you soon. Yeah, I'll see you soon. It's, uh, be at the women's gathering as long as that um, allows. Here's always good to you.